Samsung has announced the Galaxy Note 5, which abandons traditional note flexibility for high and curved metallic gloss. But maybe it's just me being grumpy, since the sealed battery is perhaps compensated for by wireless charging and quick charge compatibility. The lack of a micro SD slot is perhaps more serious, though sealed storage options do go up to 128 gigabytes for the rich. The stylus has been enhanced with a pop-out mechanism, plus you can now write on the AMOLED screen even when locked, which could be handy for quick notes. The display is still 5.7 inches, but RAM is now up to 4 gigabyte, and there's a new high-end Samsung Exynos processor. The other internals and specs, including the camera, are the same as on the existing Galaxy S6. Talking of which, there's a new Edge variant, the S6 Edge Plus. Are you keeping up at the back? Essentially a larger version of the existing Edge. The screen is 5.7 inch, again as on the Note 5, but with curved edges and obviously no stylus to pop out. Other specs are the same. Too many models, Samsung. They never seem to know when to stop. Sony has unveiled the Xperia M5, again too many models, <laughs> with an upgraded 21 megapixel camera with hybrid autofocus technology, apparently a mix of phase and contrast detection. As with other top Xperia's, it's waterproof and dust tight, but here it's all powered by a MediaTek 64-bit octa-core processor and 3GB of RAM with 16GB of storage plus micro SD. The front-facing camera is also noteworthy, being 13 megapixels and shooting 1080p, plus other usual top specs, including a 2600 mAh sealed battery. Motorola has Let's face it, been confusing everyone in recent years with the Moto G. Here's one. Yes, they've sold a ton of them, but the variants and options have been confusing to everyone. 4G? Well, yes and no. Micro SD support? Yes and no. Stereo speakers? Yes and no. It depends. And so on. Thankfully, with one caveat, the 2015 Moto G, third generation, wraps up most of the uncertainty into one model. OK, well, actually two. <laughs> this is Motorola, for goodness sake. They like to cause a little confusion. But there's an 8 gigabyte version with 1 gig of RAM, the 16 gig version here with 2 gig of RAM at a price. However, both have 4G, both have micro SD, both have the same speaker configuration. Uh, this last is somewhat ironic since we're now back down to mono only, just the bottom speaker grille houses a component. Though I, I do have a theory about this, of which more later. So, storage and RAM aside, we now have a Snapdragon 410 under the bonnet, faster and more efficient. We have IPX7 waterproofing thanks to seal ports all round, and silicone gaskets here around the SIM and micro SD slots under the back cover. We have a bigger 2470 milliamp hour battery, 20% up on last year's without much increase in overall device size and weight. We have a screen with better colours and better contrast in all light conditions. Apart from resolution, this was clearer and more light and from more angles than anything else I've ever seen running Android. We have a 13 megapixel camera up from 8 megapixel and with bigger physical sensor up in the uh, one third of an inch optical format region with dual tone LED flash and thanks to that Snapdragon 410, the ability to shoot in 1080p. Photos are pretty darned good for a budget device in most light conditions. The camera user interface is a bit of a love it or hate it affair. I, I couldn't get used to taking photos by simply tapping on the screen, but I did kind of like the advanced mode where you get to swipe round to adjust exposure and then tap again to capture. Still, if this was my main smartphone day today, I think I'll be looking out for third party camera alternatives. In short, overall, almost everything's upgraded. You can even, in some markets, customise the Moto G you get with Moto Maker, <laughs> though the replaceable back should be widely and cheaply available anyway, for those who like to change their phone colour to suit their mood. And no, of course, because of the waterproofing and the sheer price, you don't need a case on this thing. As usual with Motorola, it's stock Android, in this case, Lollipop 5.1.1, plus some tweaks, the most obvious which, uh, is notifications at a glance triggering when you pick up the phone. But there's also the Moto app introducing a couple of gestures for camera and torch, which make you look a little odd, a plus location and time-specific profiles that you can set up to automate your life. All rather nice additions, though, without spoiling the stock OS. 
The two big emissions are NFC, near field communications, which you often don't get at this end of the market, but which is becoming more and more commonly required in daily life, I contend, to pay for things, to transfer files, to pay with accessories. Surely NFC only adds a dollar or so to the bill of materials. And that mono speaker rather than the stereo beauties in the Moto G second gen. However, the quality and volume put out by this single unit is pretty good. This is full volume, I do wish there were two of them, but even so, this is fine for 99.9% of users. You can, I'm going to shout the compete. Thank you. So I'm suggesting that a larger physical speaker component was used. See also the extrusion under the back cover here, and that there simply wasn't room to include a matched speaker up at the top. Well, it's a theory. And I'm giving Motorola a pass here. The G is still my Nexus 6 Lite, especially in this 2 gig RAM edition. What I'm not giving Motorola a pass for is the price. The whole point of the G range was that it was affordable. And while the 8 gig, 1 gig RAM version is still in the £150 range, the 16 gigabyte, 2 gig RAM model is currently just over £200 here in the UK, sim free. Now, taken standalone, those prices aren't too outrageous, but today's smartphone market is incredibly competitive. In Phone Show 256, I reviewed this, the, uh, the Vodafone Smart Ultra 6 with faster processor, larger, higher resolution screen, and a bigger battery, all for 60% the price of this Moto G, albeit with a slightly disappointing camera. Or put it another way, you can get a second-hand mint condition Nexus 5 for less than the cost of the 2 gig RAM Moto G 3rd gen with far faster processor, 1080p screen and OIS in the camera. Whichever way you look at it, these prices should be lower. The 8 gig, 1 gigabyte RAM version, which will suit undemanding users, should be about £129 at most. And the 16 gig, 2 gigabyte RAM version here, for anybody who actually knows what they're doing with smartphones, should be £159 or so. At which price point the Motorola build, the waterproofing, the speaker, the other solid components all start to have an impact. Look, this is a solid upgrade and no one's going to turn away a Moto G even in 2015, but do watch out for those prices. Samsung are just annoying me at the moment, taking away features and flexibility from their top-end smartphones. Uh, I won't go into the infamous Galaxy Note 5 and more on that in a future feature, but for example, the waterproofing taken out of the Galaxy S5 and, and uh, the S6 is completely unprotected when you head on a day out. However, in my latest look at this with the Pro Porter accessories, this is the Echo case, basically a transparent shell. You pop in your S6, close the clamshell, clip, clip and the clip at the bottom, hinge at the top, a flexible plastic sheet on the front so you can use the touch screen and bingo you are fully protected. Uh, down the beach, uh, sun, sand, dust, whatever, you can even film underwater of course. So £13 minus whatever you can get off with the promo code Lucky You. And I also wanted to give a quick shout out to this, this is the six port USB charger, one of which has been in use uh, in our house for the last three months. Um, often seen charging two iPads, one iPhone, a Kindle and a couple of micro USB devices all at the same time. The only downside I found is the bright blue power light which we have to cover with a bit of gaffer tape at night. But uh, other than that, highly recommended all of this at uh, proporter.co.uk and thanks to them for supporting the phone show.